again, this is, this is a thousand birds, a thousand birds, and this is using that cool netting. This is space age material. It's a polyethylene material with stainless steel filaments threaded through it that carries a spark. Now, when, um, when, when we started with our egg production, or we, we had the egg mobiles early on because we wanted to stop having a problem with, with, with cow health and, and, egg, and the egg mobiles did that, stimulated fertility. Well then, the eggs were so good, people wanted more eggs. So, okay, so what we did, we retrofitted our broiler shelters, tucked the nest box in on the broiler shelters, put 50 layers in there and moved these uh, shelters along. And that worked extremely well, and I'm convinced would work very, very well for a backyard situation, a very small operation. We were running, you know, a thousand birds in 20 of these shelters. And um, uh, Mike and, and uh, Joyce Miller came up from Australia and introduced us to this material when it was new, when it first came out. And um, I'm, I've just been sold on it ever since. And we, so we, we eliminated all those uh, pastured shelters and went to this. Um, it's very easy to handle. Now there is a skill in setting it up. I call this the aha of pastured poultry. I mean, this stuff will keep out bears. We've watched it keep out black bears. Uh, I went out one morning and the, the, the feather net was in one field and the egg mobile was just 50 feet away because the cows had just grazed through. And there was a black bear trying to tear the, the uh, roofing off the side of the egg mobile to get in there. And there were a thousand chickens 50 feet away just out in the field and she wasn't even touching them. So I know that this stuff keeps away bears, coyotes, wolves, um, raccoons, possums, keeps the chickens in. The, um, there is a skill in putting it up. So I'm, I'm, I'm belaboring the point. This is how we handle it. So you, you lay it all out on the ground first, and then you go back and push in, um, and, and push in the stakes, okay? So you lay it all out flat, make your circle, and then you push in the stakes. And uh, we're putting, we're using three lengths of this, and that makes a quarter of an acre for the thousand birds, okay? And of course, there's a, again, there's a technique for putting it in. And I'm belaboring it because all of these things, they look easier than it is. I mean, there's a skill to it, and there's, you know, to, to keep it from being saggy and to, 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 to slant the stakes out just a little bit so that that circle is a little bit slanted out and, is, and is, the, the fence is tight. Now, people ask, well, don't the chickens go over that? I mean, they certainly can. Well, if you'll notice, it's variegated. It's got a, it's got a variegated color to it. So, so some of them are yellow and black, some are white and black, some are, are, are orange and white. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of psychology in developing that material. And um, the variegated color makes the chicken unable to focus on it. It's like, uh, you know, one of the biggest, the, the reason that herbivores mob up for predator protection is because when it's a mob and they're all moving, the lion, the jaguar, the panther can't focus on one. For example, you ever had uh, six chickens get out and you try to catch all six of them at once and you come up empty handed, right? Why? Because you can't focus on one. Finally, when you get frustrated, you say, okay, I'm going to catch that one. And you key in on that one, and, you know, and of course she makes a fool out of you. you know, and you're but, but you can get one because you're focused on one. If you've got a group of six and they're all running around, and you, and you try to corral all of them, you come up empty-handed. That's a lot of the psychology of this netting. It's a variegated netting. So when the chickens look at it, it's all fuzzy. They can't focus on it. Believe me. If you took a board, if you took a board and you put a board right here, tomorrow morning every one of those chickens would be out because they can focus on it and they can, and they can see. When they look at this, this uh, variegated netting, it, 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 it's, it's fragile, it's wavy, and, and they're not, ah, I'm not sure I can, I can uh, uh, roost on that thing. I'm not sure I can. So even though they could fly over it if they wanted to, they don't 
because of the design of the material. And that's another reason to use the old style breeds is because they're heavier and not quite as mobile as these small body Leghorn crosses, these, these uh, DeKalb Goldens, and Golden Comets, and, and, uh, and, and uh, hybrid birds. Okay, so now once you get your second um, circle, okay, everybody with me here? You've built, you've, all right, you, you've, th this is another circle coming in. Well, ah, sorry. Here's the circle that they've been in. We're getting ready to move them in here. So we've put up another circle out here, see, out here. And now we're going to move them. So we're going to open the waist of the, of the new circle. Now we're going to open the waist of the old circle. That way the chickens are always contained. Now we've got an hourglass, okay? And now the chickens uh, are going to start coming in. Of course, these right here, these, see, wouldn't it be cool, wouldn't it be cool to go out there over a season and, and uh, put, a, put a radio controlled ankle bracelet on the birds and see with a monitor to try to find out who are the first ones all the time going into the new pasture. They're the smartest birds. And you breed those smart birds. You know, wouldn't it be cool to, to actually develop the genetics from that kind of a thing as opposed to just, you know, a confinement operation that, that, that gives you the most eggs and the least amount of grain, uh, but actually, you know, adaptable thing. I mean, you know, here's, there's the bird I want right there, right there. <laughs> All right. What's this product called? Uh, it's called different places. Uh, ours is all Premier from Premier, and uh, it's called Poultry Net. And there are different sizes. There are different hole configurations. Uh, it costs it costs about ninety cents a linear foot. So one hundred and fifty feet of it, you know, costs about one hundred and thirty-five bucks or so. Uh, probably a little more here in Canada. But um, I'll tell you what, this stuff we've got rolls and rolls of this stuff and it it just it really works it's it's the it's a major major deal uh it's just it's just powered with an energizer uh and i recommend at least an energizer that's 1.2 joules or bigger this stuff the, the one thing about this netting is it does sap the power because it's a very very tiny uh tiny filament so it takes some jewels, it takes some real power to you know, push that spark through. And we've found that 2,000 volts is enough. Uh, it's wonderful to get it up to three or four or five, all right? And, uh, and so you know, we use a three-foot ground rod, just a three-foot ground rod, pound it in if, if, you know, if you're in a dry situation, you know, uh, wet the spot you're gonna put the ground rod in to get it better soil contact. If it's dry, just, just pour some water there. But, um, an energizer that is at least 1.2 joules is, uh, I think, what, what, what you need. Because it does sap the power. Can it hurt the chicken? Can it hurt the chicken? Uh, can it hurt the chicken? Well, I mean, it, 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 it's painful, but all pain does not hurt if the pain keeps you from going out where the coyotes are. Well, I mean, it, doesn't it doesn't kill the chicken. Can you get one, you know, I suppose you could get one that's too strong, yeah. Um, and, and if a chicken, in all the years we've been doing this, uh, we've probably had one or two birds get tangled up in it, and over time it will kill them. If they get tangled up overnight, um, it, it'll, it'll gradually, you know, kill them. But um, that's very, so, it's so rare, it just... And that's not the chicken you want to save for genetic stock. <laughs> All right. So, so now you can see the new paddock. We do graze with the cows ahead of this to shorten the grass because the chickens like short grass. The short grass keeps predators away. Small predators like weasels, martens, mink, uh, little things like that. They don't want to come out in this short grass because a great horned owl will pick them right off the ground at night, okay? And so keep, so using the cows to uh, prepare the, what we call prepare the table, all right? And the birds 
Chickens don't like long grass because they can't masticate it. Uh, you know, sheep like shorter grass than cows, and, and chickens are the same way. Um, they like the short grass, tender, tender short grass. So again, the cows grazing. And the other thing that, of course, the short grass does is it makes it real easy to put up this netting. You don't have as much uh, shorting out on the long grass putting up the netting, and you don't have the, you know, the netting clumped up, up and over the, the tall grass. So it makes the setup of the netting a lot simpler. Now, uh, this picture shows our old style. These were hoop structures that we had. We don't use them anymore. They've been completely decommissioned. Uh, but that was our early, that was our early prototype. And, um, and we don't recommend them. But the problem with this, as I'll point out when I go to the, the Millennium Feathernet style, is that this does not have structural integrity up, up high. And so we had to put, you know, we had to put uh, braces on the, on the floor, you know, like kite braces, you know, from corner to corner. Well, that was right down on the ground and gave you a bunch of obstructions to catch chicken legs if you had a, a, a bird that was lagging behind and, and it, it made it very difficult not to run over somebody, okay? So the new design uh, we actually came up with primarily to eliminate that problem. And I'll show you why in just a minute. Okay, so here you are. You see, uh, here's the ones you want for your genetic stock up here, not these guys back here. Duh, what's going on, you know? We do this every three days for the whole summer, and I have no clue what's going on. <laughs> All right, and there they are in their new, uh, their new area. And we move, these, we move these feeders around so they're in a one spot for three days. So a six acre, a six acre pasture gives you 72 days with a 69 day rest period. All right? So we can cover, we, with a thousand birds, we can uh, go across six acres, you know, at a 72 day rotation. So we can cover, we can go over that four times in a year that six acre field with this thousand birds. Um, and, and, and that system will, you know, will net out $10,000 on six acres in a season. Now,